to this Fowl Council side event, where we'll be discussing youth leadership for agri-food systems transformation. I'm Leticia Nijos, and I will be one of the moderators for today's event. And my name is Lucani Vogel, and I will also be co-moderating this session alongside the amazing Leticia here. Our goal here today is to shed light on the importance of youth engagement in policy and action, and also to see how we can involve more youth in agri-food systems transformation with actionable solutions. 
To get us all a star in the right foot, we'd like to show you a small video on the World Food Forum's 2023 theme, Agri-Food Systems Transformation Accelerates Climate Action. So, Lucani, what did you think of our promo video? Well, no, I definitely enjoyed it, and I see many smiles around the room, so I, I hope you all enjoyed it too. And also those tuning in online via the FAO webcast. But if you're not already familiar with the World Food Forum, the World Food Forum is an independent global youth-led platform launched by the FAO Youth Committee in 2021, with the main aim to inspire young people all around the world to take action to achieve the sustainable development goals and also a better food future for all. The World Food Forum aims to support and grow youth-led initiatives together with youth global policy recommendations. And to do so, we connect multi-stakeholders all together for the same cause. And maybe to paint a better picture for everyone to understand, Lucani can give us some examples of what we've done in the past. Yes, certainly. So throughout 2021 and 2022, the World Food Forum engaged in multiple international forums and youth consultations. We also engaged in COP27 and 28, the ECOSOC Youth Forum, the SDI Forum, Stockholm Plus 50, and also the UNFSS Coordination Hub, through which we nominated our youth policy board members to participate in key youth policy priorities and also to help shape the UNFSS Coordination Hub post agenda. And all of our activities come together into a hybrid World Food Forum flagship event to promote dialogue and debate among all the actors. And last year, we expanded our scope in order to make our event become more intergenerational and cross-sectional by gathering all relevant stakeholders, for example, the FAO Science and Innovation Forum and the FAO Hand-in-Hand -Hand Investment Forum. With this, we bring critical issues of youth engagement, science and innovation, and investment all together in the same room to discuss how we can move forward and bring action and impact. Over the past two years, our recurring forum has identified powerful ideas, solutions, and policies to transform our agri-food systems for the benefit of everyone and everywhere, everywhere. And we're definitely even more eager this year to continue our work with more enthusiasm. That being said, we are absolutely delighted to be launching the 2023 World Food Forum cycle at this 172nd session of the FAO Council, where we will be hearing from an array of diverse panelist speakers, cultural performances, and also a few key announcements of the World Food Forum 2023 activities. But without further ado, I'm absolutely delighted and honored to be welcoming Mr. Maximo Torero, the FAO Chief Economist and Chair of the FAO Youth Committee to provide the opening remarks 
of this session. So, Maximo, over to you. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Excellencies uh, and colleagues and, and friends here, and all you youth which are with us today. Thank you so much for joining uh, this side event. The idea of this side event was to inform our members and to alert all of them of the activities that are being done. So I hope for the ones that are here can transfer this information to the other members which couldn't be here right now. I am really impressed by all the progress that we have done uh, and that the youth have done in the last years. We started first with a virtual World Food Forum, which was only focused on the youth uh, activities. And then in 2022, last year, uh, the World Food Forum became an extremely important event. And it not only include the activities being done by the youth, it also incorporate through youth mechanisms and through institutional work of FAO, the work that is being done in the Hand in Hand Investment Forum, and also the work that we are doing uh, on the Science and Innovation Forum. So the last year event, uh, which was in person and virtual was hybrid, was able to bring together the Youth Forum, the Hand in Hand Investment Forum, and uh, the Science and Innovation Forum together with the chief scientists, of course, uh, and all the youth groups working together. Now, this was a huge success. And this year, I believe, will be the year of consolidation. Because it's not only to pack things together, it's to integrate things so that we can bring all the pieces together in a joint effort led uh, by the youth to try to do that. Now, building on, on last year, and building, of course, on the concept of the agri-food systems, that we have uh, developed and that we are moving forward, we need to understand that the topic is really important. And the topic of agri-food system and achieving the SDGs is a central topic for us today. We are facing significant challenges. Look what just happened in Sudan. Nobody understands, I think, yet how complex that will be and the consequences it will have in all the neighborhood countries. All the UN system has moved out of Sudan right now. So, and we were giving significant amount of support uh, to people that were in IPC3 or four and above. That has stopped over the night because of a conflict. All these people will start to migrate, will start to move out. They don't have food, they don't have how to live. So it will create a big problem. And previous year, we have the war in Ukraine. The previous year, we have the COVID-19. So this is a non-stop thing. But in addition to all these conflicts and wars, we have the problem of climate. And climate is starting to present itself by increasing frequent events of extreme temperatures, a lot of water flooding or lack of water, variability which makes the life of the farmers a lot more complex, and evolution of pests and diseases. And agriculture plays a crucial role, but we should not forget that agriculture provides food for people, which is a human right. And they have to do that. That's the first priority. We have to feed our people. That's our human right. But we should do it in such a way that we minimize the negative effects of our nature on our climate. And agriculture is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, 30% of them. It's a significant contribution to the deterioration of our environment, to use of water, and many things that is damaging our environment. So we need to find ways in which we can minimize those trade-offs, and we need to find ways in which we can choose pathways that will help us to minimize those trade-offs. That's why the topic of 2023 that has been discussed with the youth groups and with FAO and with other RBAs and other partners is called agri-food system transformation that accelerates climate action. Because this is the sector that not only has a huge responsibility of feeding people, but also the sector that will be the most impacted by climate change and the sector that at the same time is contributing to accelerate climate change. So huge job for these agri-food systems and that's why we want to bring this, this activity here, because if we are going to get the highest return over minimizing emissions, minimizing damage to our nature, it will be through the agri-food systems. These interlinkages are central, and we need new ideas, we need fresh ideas to be able to do that, to be able to achieve the goal we want. Now, transforming the agri-food system can and must be a central part of the global climate solution, and young people are at the heart of it, because you are the ones that will be living the consequences of what is happening right now. You will be the ones that will benefit if things improve. You will be the ones that will pay in the cost if things don't improve. So you need to be part of this. There is no option unless you want to let us handle the, the things and see if we mess it up. And I think 
we have seen in the last years that we're not too good at this. So when I say we, the senior, let's call it the senior people, uh, we need to get, get solutions and help uh, to work together to achieve this. Young people and, and you are increasingly interacting more in the forest. Uh, I see an amazing number of activities wherever I go in, in meetings together with the DG and alone. Uh, I have seen in the UN, in the UN uh, activities of the youth groups. You are in the COP. Uh, you are in all these activities. But always my, my plea to, to, to the youth group, youth group is to try also to bring solutions and push for your solutions. I was really impressed when I was in New York a few months ago and honestly, the only session I went that I saw something technical was the youth session. Uh, and that was good, that was great. Right or wrong, I, I, I don't care too much, but at least there was a huge effort to try to bring technical solutions on restoration that are crucially important. Uh, I would like to highlight also uh, the World Food Forum's focal point groups that act as the youth council, guiding the strategic direction of the World Food Forum policy activities, and convincingly a year of youth assembly to discuss the policies, priorities, and actions. The new cohort of the focal point groups will be launched later during this event. In addition, the World Food Forum empowers youth to find groundbreaking solutions and scientific approaches. It uses knowledge as a key driver for systemic change with the students and educators, and it engages in inquiries youth around agri-food systems, challenges through the power of art and culture. I would also like to highlight that last year we started with the World Food Forum Young Scientist Group, that provides scientific advice, evidence, and technical knowledge to the various initiatives of the forum. And I look forward to reading their report that will be launched in the upcoming STI forum, proposing science-based and action-oriented recommendations of particular concern to youth to develop and implement for agri-food system transformation. I think that's the huge asset of working with all of you, which many of you or are studying or just finished your careers or are trying to continue your careers you have a lot of new things and new technologies, new innovations that can help us in this process. As you all know, climate change is a global challenge uh, and requires a comprehensive action that is across sectors and across ages. It's not just for you, it's also for us, it's for everybody. And we need to find ways in which we can achieve sustainable production of food. That means products producing more with less, which is very complex because don't forget, we have to achieve SDG2. I hope it's the G1 and 10, which is inequalities. We need to reduce food loss and waste, and you did a great job last year in your partnerships in reduction of waste. We need to keep accelerating that. That's a priority. Why? Because it's a simple triple win solution. We have more food available, lower price, especially fruits and vegetables. So improve the diversity of diets and improve access to healthy diets. Today, 3.1 billion people don't have access to healthy diets. We use our resources more efficiently because that food is already produced and we will lose all the water, all the soil, all the organic matter that was used to produce that food. And third, we reduce emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, because the way the food is destroyed creates significant greenhouse gas emissions. We need to find ways to use our water more efficiently. The core topic of the conference this year is on water. But we need to find real practical solutions, management of the, of the basins, of the river basins, management of water when we have flooding, how we can use water better than just suffering the flooding. It's impressive to see year after year the same locations, the same countries are affected. Today I was hearing in the morning the, the situation of rice, which for us is a big challenge right now. Nobody is looking at it very carefully, but rice planting area has reduced substantially. Prices of rice are going up. Rice is the major staple for food sub-Saharan Africa. They are going to suffer for this. Okay? And the Niña and El Niño is coming, and it will be hitting producing areas of rice. So we, we don't need more early warning than that. We already know the problem is there. We need to find ways to improve. We need to find ways to resolve before the big problem happens. So, so we have a lot more information than we had in the past. And I think that's where the forum can help enormously to help us to move ahead and to resolve the challenges that we have. We need to create, as the Director General always says, efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems so that we can mitigate and adapt to climate change, increase biodiversity, and restore ecosystems, while also ensuring food security and better nutrition through agri-food systems that enable a sustainable, healthy diets, a more equitable future for all. 
FAO has now get involved into something that we call the road to the SDG2 and the 1.5 degrees Celsius. I think this meeting and the forum is a part of this roadmap that we have to do. The roadmap is similar to the energy roadmap. We are trying to figure out what are the steps that we need to accelerate in the transformation to achieve SDG2, but at the same time, minimize the trade-offs so that we can achieve the 1.5 degrees Celsius commitment. That is a very complex problem, and it's exactly the topic that you are referring in this forum. So please, let us work together so that we can move, move forward. So if we really want to achieve SDG 2, we need to achieve also SDG 1 and 10. Inequalities are enormous today. We just launched the woman report in the agri-food systems. And there you see one figure that we were mentioning already without really having the exact numbers. But during COVID-19, the women were the most affected. Most of them, a significant share of them, more than 25% lose their jobs because it affected the whole system. It affected the value chain where women work more. There is a lot of segmentation, gender segmentation in the, in the, in the food system, in agri-food systems. Men, only around 2% lost their jobs. What has that resulted in? Huge inequalities. That's one dimension of inequality, gender. Imagine indigenous people, imagine minorities. So we cannot achieve SDG 2 and 1 if we don't reduce inequalities. And that's also linked to environment. The people who are the most affected are the people that are the less resilient, are the people that have the less tools to cope with the risks that they are facing, are the people that cannot live in the areas that have protection. That's why they keep going into problems, into problems. It's not that they are crazy, it's not that they are irrational. No, they are very rational, but they don't have more to do. They have to live in a place. So we need to understand and we need to bring tools to them to increase their resilience and we need to find a solution for them. So I would like to invite all of you to the 2023 World Food Forum flagship event, which will be taking place between the 16th and the 20th of October at the FAO headquarters in Rome. You know, my wish when I started to working with the youth people was to do a big concert uh, to help the poor, but we're not going to do that. It's important that we keep working hard. And it's important that we keep progressing. So let's work together and move forward. Thank you so much, Maximo, for your words. And thank you for believing in our work here at the World Food Forum as well. But now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome the first panel moderator, discuss, uh, discussion moderator, Carmela Lopez, uh, Innovation and Outreach Analyst at IFAD. Welcome, Carmela. Thank you, Leticia, and I'm excited to start our first panel. The discussion we will dive into today represents something we at IFAD truly value. As many of you might know, IFAD is an international financial institution, as well as a UN agency that invests in poor rural people. And we know how investing in youth can have incredible returns in terms of food security and poverty reduction. We were here in this very same room at the 2022 World Food Forum discussing financing for youth innovation, because young people ideas together with policy action can truly transform agri-food systems. So I'm pleased to be here today introducing this panel on youth in agri-food policy spaces. Today we will touch upon youth engagement in food action for agri-food systems transformation, as well as share successful stories of youth engagement in new and policy fora over the past year. As you can see, some of our speakers are here at FAO headquarters in Rome, while others will be connecting live from the ECOSOC Youth Forum in New York, where it is very early in the morning right now. So that's enough of an introduction for me. I am pleased to introduce our first panel speaker, Giulia Tariello, Italian Youth Delegate to the UN. Giulia, to kickstart our panel, would you like to share with us more about what it means to be a youth delegate to the UN? 
Thank you very much for uh, this introduction and this question. Um, it is a great pleasure to be here and I want to thank the FAO and the World Food uh, Forum for inviting us, um, the youth, um, because it's, it's, I'm very happy and glad to see how many young faces are here today. Um, you know, I've been a youth delegate for um, almost a year and during this eight months of my mandate, I've been to many youth forum, youth uh, dialogues and conferences. Um, some of them were led by young people, mainly representative um, of uh, the UN or NGOs. Other were um, organized by adults and young people were <clears throat> invited only to perform. So after each conference, I asked myself, are we young people less professional? Is our voice, our ideas and solution less relevant than those of an adult? Of course not. But this answer came after I shared my thoughts with other youth delegates that were with me in this um, aforementioned um, conferences and event. I realized that we all had the same perception and disarmament feelings that the adults do not take us seriously, do not believe that our solution are actually feasible and important to take in, into account. How is fundamental to ensure fair representation in this decision-making uh, process to inspire young people? After one year of being a youth delegate, I realized that it's both an honor and a privilege. It's like a two-faced coin, because on one side, I have a privilege to speak at the United Nations and make my voice heard, and on the other side, it is an honor because, of course, I can speak at the United Nations and make my voice heard. Um, but, you know, only 37 member states of, of 193 have UN youth delegates. And that's a big problem because only um, youth from developed countries can be represented. And this only uh, perpetuate the same Western-centered point of view. Uh, so countries from the, noble, the global north should uh, provide financial aid to those countries who don't have the capacity to implement a program but are willing to. Um, the fact that the UN member states have youth delegate is very important, um, an important step toward more youth inclusiveness in political fora. And due to this important member of the FAO should consider the introduction of youth delegate programs similar to the one of the UN uh, in the context of the UNGA and the ECOSOC and the one that the WHO is a um, specialized contact of the World Health Assembly and its related um, uh, councils. Together with the youth delegate of Austria, US and Ireland, we are um, currently developing a concept note for such program. And what is demonstrated as the most effective in health governance and uh, the WHO, we believe can also be an uh, important step toward the, in advancing youth matters in the field of um, food governance and FAO. So that's why there is an urge to include young people in decision-making spaces. It is fundamental to create new opportunities for youth, especially in the UN system, guaranteeing hybrid access and facilitate process to visa application so that everyone can access to this forum. To achieve fair inclusion, uh, we must find new solutions to include uh, young people worldwide. So by empowering young people to participate in decision-making process, we can ensure that their voice are heard and that their ideas are considered. This not only benefits the political system, but also creates new opportunities for youth to develop their skills and leadership capability. So what are the actionable solutions so that young people can be represented in um, decision-making fora? I believe that education is fundamental to acknowledging the issue and the challenges facing many sectors of the economy, including climate change, food waste, and access to resources and food. Youth can work to develop and promote innovative solutions. Plus, I firmly believe that to achieve a concrete change, we need a concerted effort of youth and adults. And we have to build a bridge so that 
the previous generation and the future one can work together to ensure a peaceful, um, equitable and more inclusive society. Thank you. Thanks to you, Julia, for this. You put the focus on empowerment, representation, and concrete action. And I think this will actually link nicely to what we're gonna hear in a second, as we are connected with Claudia Scuriatti, FAO Sustainable Development Specialist and World Food Forum Focal Point in New York, who will guide us through the virtual segments of this panel discussion. Claudia, the floor is yours. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here live from New York, where the Ecosoc Youth Forum is happening. I have the pleasure and honor to have here my colleague Simaja, who will tell us a little bit more of what their discussions are about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. And hi, everyone calling in live from New York. Um, being here at the FAO Liaison Office in New York is an absolute pleasure. Calling in on the ground of the ECOSOC Youth Forum as part of the U.S. public delegation this year. ECOSOC Youth Forum is a direct platform for young people to engage with member states and the U.N. to ensure youth priorities are centered in the monitoring, review, and implementation of the 2030 Agenda, which is crucial to achieving all 17 SDGs, protecting universal human rights, and realizing peace and justice for all. Youth are invited to share best practices that will inform the, the Economic and Social Council at the high level political forum in July 2023 and the SDG summit preparatory process in April 2023. So what have been our key takeaways? Um, this has been one of the more inclusive conferences. Um, from what I've seen, um, we definitely have more virtual side events and global participation as a result. And it's been really cool being in the room um, and seeing on the screen people from all over the world um, participating and taking time out of their day um, to listen to the insights. Um, but overall, I did see participation is lower compared to other UN conferences and commissions. And that is telling. Um, that even though we do talk about young people as a priority, um, we do see um, less participation um, overall um, from member states, from UN officials, um, and also the young people that are actually able to attend. Um, I also um, and also wanted to mention that there were um, less discussion spaces. Um, one thing that we noticed was there is more statement offering um, that is true in the ministerial se sessions and even in the side events that we attended. Um, I had the opportunity to attend a side event hosted by UN Foundation Next Generation Leaders. And this was finally the moment um, yesterday where I felt like I was actively participating in constructive discussion um, where my feedback would actually mean something, where it would actually go to something. Um, and based on these conversations, picked up a few key points that I wanted to share with you all in Rome. Um, young people are really interested in what will happen at the High Political Forum and the SDG Summit. They're really interested in it and are planning now and are mobilizing now to make sure that we have an adequate voice at the table then. They're worried also about how much of a say they'll have. Um, they don't just need a seat at the table, but as Linda Thomas-Greenfield, our U.S. ambassador to the U.N. said, they need a seat at the head of the table. And young people worry about how they'll even get through the door. They're worried about barriers to participation, especially for more underrepresented youth groups who should be present. And young people bring the ideas, the global reach, their community's best practices, and their expert leadership honed through their years of advocacy and navigating systems that are meant to serve them, but far often do not. The U.S. has taken substantial steps to increase meaningful youth participation. In November of 2022, President Biden appointed our first ever special envoy for global youth, Abby Finknauer. Abby is one of those inspiring leaders and young people that I've ever met. Um, and I'm super thrilled um, that um, I got to meet her at Ecosoc Youth Forum this year. Um, she ran for public office at the age of 24 and served on the House for years, representing Iowa in critical decision making and leading critical reforms on transportation, the economy and public health. Abby now works to uplift the voices of global youth and her participation at Ecosoc this year is a major step 
towards actualizing youth priorities around the world. So overall, to wrap up, Ecosoc has showed me that there is reason to be hopeful, but Ecosoc has also shown me that urgency is needed to have meaningful youth engagement. High-level political forum and the SDG Summit are rapidly approaching, and we need to ask ourselves the following questions. What youth voices are we including? Not just at the summit, but in the majority of the prep work that happens before then. How are we reducing barriers to participation, or at least helping overcome these barriers to participation? For example, many young people struggle with the visa process, like Julia mentioned, getting passes, having the information needed to participate online, and in all the different consultations that are held in advance of conferences, and seeing the tangible impact of their participation, which oftentimes comes at a massive sacrifice. And finally, affirming why this all matters. FAO is one of the most youth positive and empowering organizations that I've seen during my youth observer term and continuing to reaffirm that mission, that commitment to supporting one of the most crucial stakeholders we have in food, agriculture, climate change and beyond is paramount to us realizing a better world for all. Thank you. Thank you very much for this important message and um, key takeaways from the episode before. So now I would like to um, to give the floor to our colleague Tess, who's here from the World Food Forum Youth Policy Board, and I wanted to uh, maybe hear from her why it's important that the World Food Forum is here, and the link between the the, the agricultural system transformation, the agenda 2030, and our SDGs. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Uh, so we know that the agri-food systems aren't explicitly on the agenda here at EcoSoc, um, but we know as food systems activists that food systems touch all of the SDGs and are touched by them, not just SDG 2, no longer. So the four SDGs we're focusing on at EcoSoc are SDG 6, 7, 9 and 11. <clears throat> so SDG 6, uh, access to safe water and sanitation, or well, 70% of, global, of uh, water use is due to the uh, agricultural system. And then uh, SDG 7, access to clean energy and clean and affordable energy. <clears throat> well, we know that um, agricultural machinery needs to be powered by renewable energy, but we also know that agricultural products can be used to generate renewable energy. <clears throat> and then we've got SDG 9, innovation and infrastructure. <clears throat> and that's going to help to improve the efficiency and productivity of our agricultural systems. But it's also important to make sure that that innovation is inclusive. And then we've got SDG 11, uh, sustainable cities and communities. And then the huge question of how we feed highly dense urban populations. Um, so I think uh, myself, uh, myself and other food activists have really been championing um, the agri-food system throughout these conversations, throughout the regional roundtables and thematic roundtables, and making sure that the food system is on everybody's agenda, especially as we head towards the SDG Summit. Thank you so much. Um, now I would like maybe to ask you, um, since you're here, um, some of the key takeaways from last year for Food Farm flagship event and the youth assembly. Yes, we, uh, we, we had a little bit of an overview Maximo, um, and the event was really uh, energizing and motivating. I thoroughly recommend uh, to everybody. <clears throat> and the, the flagship event was really a culmination of the World Food Forum's efforts uh, during 2022. So during 2022, we surveyed and consulted with global youth, and we were trying to identify the uh, regional priorities for young people for the agri food system. What change do people want to see in the agri food systems, and, and how does that change um, in the different regions? So then at the flagship event, we hosted different youth assemblies, uh, regional youth assemblies, and we brought together high level um, panelists and the youth, and we co-created solutions that align with those priorities. <clears throat> so uh, at the moment, we're working on a food waste initiative for young people, which I'm really excited to announce, well, will be announced very soon. Um, and we're also um, doing some capacity development sessions as well, so training and empowering young people to make change in their communities. And of course, the big takeaway um, and why we're here is to announce uh, the Youth Policy Board and the new members of that. We've got a lot, lot of work to do. I'm uh, really excited to get to know them and, and start creating real change in their efforts. 
And we've now got a video to um, welcome. Thank you. So Thank you, Claudia, and it was great to hear also from Tess and Emaja. It was a stimulating discussion for us to follow here in Rome, and I'm sure also for our audience online. And now, joining us live from Lagos, Nigeria, 2022 World Food Forum poet Victoria Shaka, who will be delivering a cultural creative performance. Victory, the floor is yours. Hello, distinguished guests. All protocols duly observed. Victoria Chaka is my name, the FAO World Food Forum Poet Laureate. So I'm so excited and delighted to join you all here today as I perform my poem titled Healthy Diet, Healthy Planet. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. One planet, one plan for sustainability. To militate against hunger, pains, and humanity. The trail of human misery and degradation makes a war of starvation linger upon this generation. Not of machine guns, but intestinal cells. Not of bullet wounds, but salt from belly pounds. Not of rubble, but stomach rumble. Sorry, everyone, but we have a backup video on the presentation in case there was any technical difficulty. So I think now we can uh, play the video. And I wrote general, leave this vicious circle of poverty. One planet, one plan for sustainability. To a land that produces food for all, then throw it away as if it never existed at all. The and it's... degradation makes a war of starvation linger upon this generation. Not of machine guns, but intestinal sounds. Not of bullet wounds, but soft from belly punks. Not of rubble, but stomachs rumbling. And ironical, unspoken grief with deafening silence. We lavish on war, yet the poor strive to eat. Some wasting away with malnutrition, others shockingly overweight. We are trapped in this circle of unrighteous anger, bloated out by the pangs of emptiness and perils of hunger. If this vicious circle of poverty prevails, a blooming economy will soon become stale. We are destroying our land that produces food for all, then throwing it away as if it never existed at all. If the system designed for maximum production is broken, how do we get quality over quantity of what's edible? The nitty-gritty of human survival is good nutrition, strengthened by the arms of sustainable agriculture to thrive from dawn to dusk with ecstatic satisfaction that nourishes the body with vitamins for action. So everyone should learn and earn without inferiority in pursuit of sustenance, equality, separity. 
What good is food availability if it is void of accessibility? What essence is it to bank on good nutrition if we've got to break a bank? The worst thing about hunger isn't just the rippling effects of war, the politics or outbreak of disease, but the silence we do not resist. So let's take the weight off our shoulders to prepare the feast that brings us together. To eliminate deficiency in a land of milk and honey is to give up exchanging resources for a penny. The earth is warming, oceans are rising, creatures must thrive and humans must keep on living. Our world is so concerned with economic numbers, yet grapples to solve the puzzle of world hunger. So let's take the weight off our shoulders to prepare the feast that brings us together by stretching forth our arms towards our mandate of what's at stake with no food going to waste. When all of heaven is filled with clouds and rain, if the universe isn't the barrel of hurricane, streaks of bliss will surely blow some on our ecosystem till the crust of drought flourishes with food system. So let's take the driver's seat on the wheel of production till earth vegetation sprouts a diversification. If food security is our priority against instability, productivity is a recovery opportunity from calamity. One planet, one plan, here is food for thought. No more empty talk that doesn't reduce food loss. Youthful willpower is the strength of transformation, creatively propelled by inclusive contribution. Young stars should thrive innovatively in the sand of time to erect the building blocks of change for a lifetime. And if we genuinely live with a healthy diet, then we can't die yet. Thank you. Well, I think we can all say this was a really inspiring segue to the conclusion of this panel. I hope we were able to convey the urgency of including young people in agri-food policy spaces, as well as to, be, to build a bridge and a link with what is happening right now at the ECOSOC Youth Forum in New York. And now I'm pleased to, pl to pass the floor to Livia Hengel, Free Rise Project Manager at the World Food Program, who will be moderating the second panel. Livia, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you um, to the World Food Forum for having me. It's a pleasure to see so many people in the audience. Um, I am going to tell you um, about one easy way to help fight hunger um, from your cell phone, and then I will present the next panel to um, discuss individual action um, and converting policy into actionable items. So my name is Livia Hengel and I oversee Free Rice, a youth platform powered by the World Food Program here in Rome. For those of you who don't know Free Rice, we're a philanthropic trivia game that enables young people, especially children, to help fight hunger by answering trivia questions. Every right answer raises 10 grains of rice for WFP's work um, fighting and saving lives around the world. At Free Rice, we believe that small acts multiply to make big impacts. Every year, 6 million young people join our cause, motivated by the desire to do good and facilitated by a digital platform that they can access at their computers at school or from home on their cell phones. Free Rice is free to play, and the majority of our players are children in elementary schools in the US, though we do have a wide audience across all corners of the globe and all ages. Uh, we have categories that span general interests from identifying world capitals to foods of the world and climate action. Um, and we also have an area dedicated to ambassadors for change where we profile women leaders and hunger heroes throughout history. So we're an educational platform where you can play, you can have fun and you can do good at the same time. To this day, Free Rice has raised 214 billion grains of rice through the platform. And we're not just fostering community by playing the game, but we're also involving young advocates in co-creation on our platform. So we launched a new website last year that has a blog and we invite people to share inspirational stories from their own communities. So if this resonates with any of you, please feel free to get in touch. Um, and um, yeah, I invite you basically to check out freerice.com to see what it's all about. Um, and now I will introduce you to my colleagues on the stage. This second panel will focus on how youth can engage and play central roles in transforming our agri-food systems by supporting and implementing ideas and solutions for the current crises we're facing. We will be looking at several examples of meaningful and actionable youth solutions that are really making a difference at the global, regional, and local level, 
highlighting the fact that youth are today's leaders of change. So I will pass it on now to Michelle Sec, the World Food, uh, World Food Forum Head of Youth Action to see how young people are translating policy into action. Thanks. Um... Sorry. Hello, everyone. So I am Michelle. I'm from Malaysia, and I'm really excited to be here uh, to share on this segment on an impact initiative on food waste that we'll be launching uh, later this year. Uh, illustrated in the earlier panel and in the opening, young people are showing that they're massively advocating and contributing already towards transforming our agri-food systems through their engagement in policy spaces, innovation, entrepreneurship, grassroots action. We cannot deny the space as stakeholders. They are setting the example that we actually need, like showing the energy and urgency that should be reflected in our institutions and organizations and also for world leaders to step up to. They are eager to see their visions and policy recommendations to be implemented and translated into action. And to do that, as Julia mentioned, it needs to be recognized that they cannot act alone. Resources need to be provided and shared to turn those youth policy us into action. We need real partnerships with young people to really make this happen. So as an example, during last year, uh, in 2022, during the Hunger Action Month, the Wolf Forum, we collaborated with the social gastronomy movement through the Universal Plate Campaign. The campaign brought together cross-sectoral stakeholders sharing meal kits um, from recovered food linking closely to food banks. We collaborated with, last them, with them last year uh, to engage youth into their campaign, raising the awareness on four Cs, COVID, conflict, climate emergency, and the rising food costs worldwide. The initial goal of the campaign was to share 3 million meals. However, the results of the campaign exceeded all expectations, uh, with 71 million meals shared in 27 countries in more than 1,200 cities, equating to an estimated 20 million kilograms of food saved from being wasted. This is not simply an action on saving food, but also respecting the natural resources used in its production, such as water, land, soil, and also giving back the respect to the people who produced it, our farmers. This campaign shows the catalytic, catalytic power when organizations partner with young people and when networks join forces. And while these results and initiatives are great achievements to be celebrated, the current statistics on climate and food are still very frightening and daunting. We need to really see the action and progress on these issues. So here is where we ask ourselves at the Wolf Forum, how can we do better and how can we really make change as a platform, fostering the partnership potential that we have? How can we inspire collective food actions to be taken to accelerate the climate action that we actually need? So this is where the idea of an impact initiative was born, uh, to try to harness the energy to transform its actions bringing together members of our youth policy board to drive the actions and also collaborating closely with our Rome-based agencies, sisters, sis, our sister agencies of the Rome-based agencies, uh, and also the FAO food loss and waste team. At COP27, a pledge was launched called the 123 pledge, a call to action for governments, companies, institutions, entrepreneurs to prioritize food loss and waste in their climate agenda. But there was something missing there, and here is where the Wolf Forum aims to bridge that gap and add youth to that equation, giving a tangible way on how youth can play a role in institutional and community change. We will be launching a youth pledge under this umbrella for young people to take on and to hold their institutions and communities accountable. The pledge will follow three areas to learn about food waste on its drivers and its issues, to act by sharing tangible ways that we can fight this global issue together, whether on an individual level or to influence an institution, and providing a way of how we can track to illustrate how local actions can actually contribute to large global impact. Global issues such as poverty, malnutrition, they are daunting, overwhelming. As a young person myself, who will be living with these consequences, like Maximo said, I am terrified of these issues, and I know I'm not alone here. But if you break it down into tangible steps and actions, then the issues can sometimes look a little bit more manageable. If you provide a community, it will feel less lonely and to be more possible. And together, working as a collective, we can be empowered with each other. Putting a number into collective action, I recently read a study where researchers estimated that we need 3.5% of the population to take significant action that can lead to political change. And think about this number. In a classroom of 50 people, that's 1.5 person. We, hold, we all hold a lot of power to make a difference. And when we come together, we can truly become a Catholic force. 
as I said, I'm very frightened by these issues, but seeing that, thinking about that number makes me feel hope, at least that we can make the change and see the transformation that we need in our agri-food system. So with that, I am inviting you to join this collective action. More details will come very soon, uh, but if you're an organization tackling food waste or a member state with a food waste agenda, please let us connect and let's drive climate action through food action. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I'm so inspired to hear that we just need 3.5% of people to get behind something to enact real change. So it's great to hear about this. Um, I'll pass it on to Janina, Janina, apologies, um, the head of innovation of the World Food Forum, who will present the Youth Food Lab and Incubation Program. Thank you, Olivia. And my name is Janina. I lead our innovation activities here at the World Food Forum. Um, as we heard from Maximo in the beginning, youth is inheriting our planet and all of the challenges that come with it. But luckily, we also see a lot of innovative solutions coming from youth. And this is why with the World Food Firm Innovation Lab, we established an ecosystem for teams of young and youthful innovators to come in at any stage of their innovation journey, be it um, that they have an idea that they want to explore or um, an existing startup that they want to bring to the next level, be it from a research background or coming from the private sector. We do this through a number of hands-on competitions like our transformative research challenge for our teams of young and youthful researchers or through our startup innovation awards. We also host innovation masterclasses to build capacity. And this year in our year of action, for the first time, we are running an incubation program, the Youth Food Lab. And we're doing this in collaboration with the International Association of Students in Agricultural and Related Sciences, EAS, as well as Wageningen University and Research. So we have brought together 10 amazing global teams and they are all coming from former um, challenges that we have run. So from our transformative research challenge, from EAS global project competition, and also from Wageningen's nature-based solutions challenge. And since February this year, we are working closely with these 10 really amazing teams and helping them in accelerating their early stage solutions. So these teams receive facilitated workshops from us uh, around systems practice, business development, communication, and many more topics. They also are paired with mentors, both from FAO as well as bargaining in university and research. And uh, in addition, they get to travel to the World Food Forum uh, flagship event here in October to present their innovative solutions. So for today, we have prepared a sneak peek and we want to give them the stage. So let's hear from our teams. Hello everyone, my name is Bruno Ferreira, co-founder of the first and only Food Bank of Bolivia, a circular initiative that tends to solve the problem of food waste and hunger in our beautiful country. Hi, I'm Fin Fulua. I'm from Quality. At Quality, we are committed to improving the standard and quality of beans in Nigeria. Hi, I'm Arturo Venturella, co-founder of Pura Regenerative Cultures and HBA Solutions, an impact business with a mission to facilitate the transition to regenerative agriculture and to scale up ecosystem restoration. Hi, this is Pashem from IMI and I represent the Water Security Passionate Group. My work is essentially to increase water productivity in developing countries starting from Ethiopia. Welcome to Youth Food Lab 2023, Team Hydropan. My name is Dennis, the founder. Our objective is harvesting water for crop production by small scale farmers in Assals. Hi, I'm Samara Polvatta from the School Meets the Reef team. We are working on coral reef rehabilitation and ocean literacy in Sri Lanka. I'm Onurai from Wetlands for Nepal. My team works in wetland restoration. 
using nature-based solutions while promoting green economy. Thank you. I'm Anissa from Mama for Planet Indonesia. Food waste allows and tribute and 10% of the greenhouse gas emissions. In Mama for Planet, we empower mothers to be the agents of change for zero food waste habits at the household level. My name is Stephen Bright Sakwa from Team Bees and Trees Uganda. Our intervention focuses on giving farmers an extra source of income through beekeeping and tree growing to reduce the despair that usually drives them into encroaching on natural resources. Thank you so much, Yanina, for sharing these projects with us. Um, I want to introduce Victor Hugo, the head of localization, who will tell us about the importance of thinking globally and acting locally. Thank you so much, Livia. Uh, many thanks for this opportunity. I mean, with a call to inspire youth action from the local level, I'm joining from Nairobi, Kenya, and it, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. So, dear excellencies, uh, members of the AFO Council, young and young at heart, our change makers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I mean, there's one quote, very simple but powerful reference that was made uh, at the beginning of this session of the AFO Council. And it says that with nearly 1 billion people going hungry every day, with the globe facing the biggest hunger crisis ever, uh, the challenges facing our agri food systems need our full attention, they need our full efforts. And most importantly, they need our unconventional ideas. <clears throat> and I know that young people are never short of uh, solutions. They are never short of uh, uh, bold and actionable ideas that we can be able to implement uh, to help um, solve uh, the crisis that we are in today. This idea um, came from the flagship event, World Food Forum flagship event, um, where the overwhelming voice of young people was very clear. Uh, young people stated that uh, with the challenges of our agri-food systems being vast, being complex, and being shared, uh, most importantly, the agri-food systems challenges were inherently local. And so with this, then there's a need to go local. Um, I mean, the model for transforming our food systems, the model for achieving youth engagement in the agri-food systems uh, should emphasize thinking global, but acting locally. And it is only through local youth action, young people on the ground, um, that we can be able to ensure that yeah, we build on young people's priorities, build on their knowledge, uh, build on their aspirations, uh, these people who have uh, who live with these challenges every single day and know these challenges best. Uh, and so we also do realize that at the local level uh, is where we can best maximize the opportunity for young people's participation uh, in decision making and in our agri-food systems. And so at the World Food Forum, we have decided to uh, respond to this call and to go local. And so with uh, what we're doing at the World Food Forum uh, is to empower young people to convene, uh, to self-organize and to build platforms that can mobilize youth, other youth within the local levels, um, I mean, to inspire action uh, in their respective communities, in their respective cities and win their respective countries. And with this, we do this uh, through uh, WFF national chapters. So with NAF, uh, WFF national chapters, young people have a platform not only to initiate and sustain solution building in their communities, they have a platform to inform policy making in their countries and also to create lasting change um, in their local agri-food systems. And so with uh, the existing national chapters, what we are seeing is that we are shifting how we perceive local youth um, engaged in ag agriculture and the food sector. We are seeing them um, as valuable people. We are um, leveraging on their expertise, uh, valuing their knowledge, championing their agency, and engaging them as strategic assets that can contribute uh, to a better food future, even for their local agri-food systems. And our, we are just getting started. Our vision really is to catalyze the formation of a global mosaic of national chapters, inspiring action, empowering young people, connecting young people, uh, so that they can be able to change the present and the future of their local agri-food systems. I do believe that this is a shared quest and we do invite you to join us as we create this global mosaic of young people transforming our global agri-food systems. So join us um, uh, on this quest and we look forward to joining you um, as we transform our food systems together. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, um, Livia, and thank you so much, um, Victor, for those inspiring words. And thank you again to all the panelists, speakers who joined us today, and also to you all who joined us in person, and also the ones who are tuning in online via the FAO webcast. Thank you. Um, and we hope that this session has given you a deeper understanding of what we're doing here at the World Food Forum and our mission to help achieve the sustainable development goals and also a better food future for all. And I'd like to invite everyone before we leave to follow our activities through our link tree that you can scan a QR code that is going to show up right now and the screen right behind us. By scanning that, you can uh, find a link tree with all our information, the activities we're doing, and you will be in touch with our updates from our team. And a final call for action is that if you haven't applied already, but if you're interested, we have a call for applications open for youth side events at our uh, World Food Forum flagship in October. So we have the opportunity to host a side event here between the 16th and 20th of October in FAO headquarters at our World Food Forum. But now, Maximo, do you have any final words that you'd like to share with the global youth? No, just uh, thank you all for, for being here and, and please smile. You are too serious right now. Uh, it's important to smile a little bit and, and uh, we will make a call for youth members to also be part of the, of the World Food Forum, of the Youth Forum. So we hope uh, we will get a significant participation of members this year, uh, of youth members, uh, members linked to, to the countries, of course. So please uh, join us again and thank you so much for being here and and let's hope and let's wish for the best World Food Forum ever and for the best Youth Forum ever. So thank you. Thank you all so much again. And please do join us next week on May the 2nd, where we have a side event during the Science, Technology and Innovation Forum. Of course, more details will be on our link tree where you can find it um, through scanning the code. Thank you again. Have a lovely day. Thank you.